It's a CCS twofer. First, let's warm you up with some runner's lane interference, and then we'll go to Anaheim with Jeff Nelson for a hot mic moment. Chasing a guy like this. Well, there's that butt that you were looking for. Boyd Fields, and it's going to hit Bubba Thompson. Then they're going to call Bubba Thompson out of the 45-foot lane, and that means that Robbie Grossman's going to have to go back to first base. Runner's lane interference has made an appearance before. Let's zoom in. There's the umpire at home plate on the line to get this call. The runner has to go into this green lane. The lines are considered part of the lane. And if you're not, then you get hit by a throw. It can be deemed interference. A batter's out when in running the last half. They run outside to the right of, inside to the left of the foul line, but not within the lane and interfere with the fielder taking the throw at first base. The easiest way to get that call is to actually drill the runner in the back with the ball if you're the thrower. The receiver, first baseman, can't catch it because it hit the batter runner who was not legal the entire way. So this is the correct call, runner's lane interference. Remember, you have to be legal the entire, and within the lane, the entire distance, what they call the last half of the distance to first base. You can't be there for one stride or two. It has to be the entire length. The only exemption to the entire length rule is if you are legally within the lane the entire time, you're allowed to exit the lane at the very, very end just to touch first base. But if you are not legal in the lane the entire time, you don't have exit privileges, so to speak. So that means that because the runner wasn't legally in the entire time, this is runner's lane interference. Look at the history of it. There's a related video. It tells you also why I don't particularly enjoy this rule, but while the rule exists, this is the correct call. Runner has to come back to first on the interference. Bubba Thompson out of the 45-foot lane, and that means that Robbie Grossman's going to have to go back to first base. Shifting gears, we're now in Anaheim for Jeff Nelson on a hot mic. For birdie, ground ball right back to the mound. That's one, a low throw, but they turn two. Inning-ending double play. You sort of take for granted that the catcher's going to touch home plate on the force out, but... He didn't, so the Marlins will challenge. Miami is challenging. Now, home plate umpire Miami C.B. Buckner had a, a really Miami good look at it. Miami is challenging the out call at home plate. You might have noticed the umpire tried to say Miami is challenging three different times. And I think I know what happened. The speakers are playing music while Nelson is trying to make an announcement. And it looks to me like he's starting to get annoyed that they're not turning down the music so he can talk. That makes this next hot mic moment kind of understandable. They got their heads up their ass. <laughs> Even CB turns and gives a look. The music blaring in the background while he makes the announcement is so amusing to me, and that's why I think it's not him being annoyed with Miami challenging the play, but more so not being able to vocally compete with Motley Crue because the music hasn't been turned down at all. The Marlins are going to challenge that. They got their heads up their ass. Anyway, we all know the call is going to get overturned, and he runs into the same music problem trying to make the overturn announcement. Has to put his hand up like, hey, I'm trying to talk here. After review. Now they're playing Let It Be, and he's just like, I'm just going to wait for you. I'm just going to wait. <laughs> After review, the call is overturned. The runner is safe. So there you have it, my analysis, which differs from probably everyone else on the internet. Thanks for the question. Visit us online at CloseCallSports.com. Subscribe, and we'll see you on the site. Line drive left field. That's going to get down.